God gave us his word that we would be able to understand not only what was about him, but who he is and how we can be as he takes his word and allows us to identify with it, to see that as it is written, there are things about it that we feel connected to, that it describes us, that it fits our life. And that's how the Word of God is taken by the Holy Spirit and applied to us in our daily life as we live and breathe and have and move our being in God, as the Scripture says. Because the Scripture is called the Word of God, which is also the title of Jesus. So how could a physical person be the Word of God also? Because God in and of himself doesn't exist in the same way we do. He's beyond our understanding because he created us, which means that he's greater and we're lesser. So there are things and aspects that we know work and we know are true, but we don't know exactly, intimately, personally, exactly how it works, except to say that God knows and can arrange his word that's written to fit into your life because he knows the future which before we were born he had already planned it out and has planned out our lives accordingly so it fits in the circumstances daily of our life we can read it and say hey that fits me today because he knew you were going to be reading it that day so he arranged and had arranged your life and the circumstances to fit and meet together in the word of god it's basically physical, spiritual, and emotional. It fits in three different categories, which is like the Trinity, the triunity of God, the oneness of what God is. And so Jesus, as being the Word of God, speaks to us in Psalms also, even though it predates him in some ways, he was already there because he's the Word of God. And it says, in the beginning was the Word of God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So Jesus is God, when David is crying out to him, David knows God by way of Jesus himself, not revealed yet as the Messiah, but as the one he was looking to, the one that he knew intimately, the one that he was responding to. And in a lot of ways, we see how David expresses a lot of our heart, a lot of our feelings as we look to Jesus to see the Father because we were told no man has seen the Father at any time except the Son of Man who has revealed him to us and that Jesus is the physical representation of God is that as we look to try to see a spiritual being we only see the physical representation which is the Son who is and has been exemplified in being created a body for him to be contained in and that is what we see as being the son of god the son of man because he was born of a woman but conceived by the holy spirit coming upon that woman and an image or a personification of god's creation made and created for him in that he is likened unto us and we are likened unto him so david looking upward and seeing God doesn't see the Father. He sees the Son. In Psalm 8, David says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou might still the enemy and the avenger. O Lord, our Lord, Excellent is thy name. We're told that there's only one name that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess, whether in heaven or whether in hell, whether before judgment or in judgment, whether on the earth or whether it be as the earth ends. We're told that the name of Jesus, every tongue shall confess and every knee shall bow. So we know that, O oh Lord, our oh Lord, how excellent is thy name. People like to make out to be this sacred name idea where they come up with this yud he vav he that somehow using the yud and using the he and the vav he we come into the I am and the eternal one and the extent one and the one who will be what I will be and I am that I am 
and we try to make God the Father out to be the name above all names when God said, I have given you a more excellent name. You see, it wasn't about the Father that David was crying out, because God had already given Jesus a more excellent name. And if he had responded to Moses, when he said, what is your name that I may know you? Moses never would have understood. He said, I will be what I will be. To my people, I shall be what I will be. Or, that's the way it's said in Hebrew, but in the English we say, I am that I am, or the ex self extent one, the one who is already existing. I have been and I am. That's who I am, what I am, as I am. Because there's no way to quite describe what God is. God is God. So, I am that I am. But when David is crying out, Oh Lord, our Lord, he is saying Jesus. He is pointing to the one who was to come. He saw him before he had become into the world. And he set his glory above the heavens. Who is like, how excellent is your name in all the earth? The name that is going to be and required of every man, that at his name we would bow. And he has set your glory above the heavens. What is the glory of the name of thy name? It is that name that we would all bow to, that we would see that what was done in his name. Whose name? Do we say that we pray in the name of the Father? No. We pray to the Father. Do we say that at the name of Yahweh, Yahweh, Yehovah, Yahweh, is that it would be without any vowels, it would be yud, yud, it'd be yud, yud, hey, yud, 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 the, vav, yud, and a hey, yud, there's no vowels, yud, so Jehovah, Jehovah is one way of saying it in the English that people have created, but there's no J, it's a Y. So there's people that get all wrapped up into this Yahweh thing, but there's no W. So they get all carried away about words and letters and consonants. But God said, the more excellent name that I have given is at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. So we know what name it is. We know whose name it is. It's the name of Jesus. And it says in Psalm 2, Verse 2, out of the mouth and babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou might still the enemy and the avenger. I always smile when I see people get carried away about what they say when God said, out of the mouth and babes he has perfected praise. Because if you look at a little baby, the baby responds to love and shares love the best way it knows how. The baby babbles at what is babbled at. The baby speaks at what it was spoken to. The baby responds to what it was given. Do you see there's a perfect action and response there out of babes and sucklings? And that's what God is saying, the perfect strength. Because in that love, in that response, in that caring, God ordains strength because that is what we are to become like. Responders to God responding to what God has done for us in love. Being just like the children, just like the babes, just like those who are still being held by their mothers. Because they don't suddenly cry out without a purpose or without a cause. But they have a need and they go to the direct one who can satisfy that need. Their mother, if they're sucklings. Or the one that's loving them, if they're a little older. And when we find that there is conflict or an enemy or those who would cause harm to children, do they not flee to their mother or their father? Do they not go to the one who loved them and seek protection? Because God is an avenger and he does protect and he does guard and he does watch over children. And he will, even as he did when he said to Rachel, who was mourning for her children for they were no more, he did cause those who slaughtered the children at the time that Jesus was born to suffer judgment for that. 
we have an assurance that in looking at children, in looking at babes, in looking at sucklings, in looking at those who don't know and haven't filled their minds and brains with all this religious ideas, that we can become simple, we can become joyful, we can become loving in the most simplistic of ways if we just respond to love as we are given love. And that God, as the scripture says, is love. So when we know, O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name, we know that the one that we're responding to isn't about his name, but about who he is. And since God is love, you can respond to him in love as you were loved. And that's the only way I would be saved. Because it isn't the condemnation of God that causes me to repent. It isn't the logic that causes me to figure it all out. But it was the love of God. God's love shed for me, God's love demonstrated to me, God's love poured out upon me that caused me to know His name and to call Him my Lord and my God. And today in Psalm 8, 1 and 2, isn't that who you want to know? The Lord your God, whose name is more excellent than all the names in all the earth, who is named God is salvation, who is Yehoshua, who is Joshua, who is the man we call Jesus, who happens to be the Son of God, the Son of Man.